I'm going to step back even further before I ever met a Cola Vecchio. Um, in college, I heard a guy speak, and he talked about, uh, he, ta he told a story of uh, a guy in the 1800s by the name of George Mueller, who was coming to New York to uh, have a conference, an evangelical conference of some sort. He had to come by ship, and on the way, about halfway to America, the, fog, the, the wind stopped and the fog rolled in. And he uh, approached the captain and said, you know, what's going on? Why are we stopping? The captain said, hey, it's a fog and uh, we're gonna be stuck here. And he said, I've gotta get to New York. The captain said, it's the fog. So uh, the story goes that he, uh, right there and then, just prayed out loud and said, Lord, you called me to be in New York. This I can't get there because of the fog. Please take the fog away. Amen. From there, the story goes that they walked out. You know, he left the, left the bridge, walked out on the deck. Captain says, where are you going? He said, I'm going out to watch the fog roll away, which is exactly what happened as the story goes. I, that story snuck into my heart as a 18 year old. And I, um, was probably always on the lookout for an opportunity to see the fog roll away. Fast forward to late 1990s, I uh, was a member of a church where Mark was a youth pastor. During that time, um, some of his youth responsibilities diminished and he started speaking in church and it was really well received and really different. And we weren't particularly friends at this time, but uh, the but I was attracted to this guy, and really what I was thinking is I thought, hmm, this looks like a guy where I might be able to go see the fog roll away sometime. So we did become friends as as things developed and God moved around in the organization of that church and. Um, we began to meet on a somewhat regular basis and dream about what it would be like um, to kind of shift the gears of that church. Didn't have any idea of starting a new church. We ended up running off to a church conference, came back with a, with a lot of vim and vigor about moving things and uh, presented our case to that church. Wasn't really well received. so. God continued to move. I won't say we got kicked out of the other church, but there was a little flavor, um, but that was all God's doing too. Uh, one thing led to another and they, they kind of said, you know, if you're gonna do something like this, kind of get on with yourselves and why don't you not come here anymore? That's exactly what we needed though. The uh, next year was spent praying and, and trying to figure out how you do this, how you, how you start a church. Um, we weren't being sent out from another church, didn't have any money, didn't have a place, um, just a calling, I guess, as we look back, we'd call that a calling. Um, the team at that point was about nine people and we met every um, Friday or Saturday night um, for prayer at somebody's house. Um, it was a special time, our kids were all little and uh, um, we sent them to the upper room and we talked for a while and prayed for a lot. And so, um, so in uh, 1999, we kind of said, okay, we're, we're gonna do this, we're all in, right? And so uh, we, uh, the Lord arranged for us to meet some an organization that was interested in church planting. They asked us to come to a meeting, tell, us what, tell them what they were doing. We left with a, um, we weren't there for anything, but we left with a, a $60,000 commitment to whatever we were gonna do. We left that meeting just going, well, what just happened here? But uh, that was just the beginning of, the beginning of really miraculous stuff that happened it was just the first time the fog rolled away. So, um, it's very special beginnings.